Hello crafters! This is Suzanne from A Creative Muse. Welcome to the tutorial on how to make this card. But before I get into the video, during editing, I decided to make two versions of this video. This video is the full length edited version. In the second version, I'm going to speed up the video drastically. I'm not going to be talking at all. It would just have music in the background. So you can choose to watch either version. Some of you may not want to watch the full length. In this full length video, I do give a lot of tips and tricks. So if you're new to crafting, you bought this set and you really want to slowly explore it and play along, watch the full length. If you're just curious about what I did, then you can watch the sped up version, but I'm not going to be talking in it. So you're not going to hear the tips and tricks. Okay. Now let's get into this video. I hope you enjoy the process to show you how to put together this card. This has been requested more than once. Let's better press it, create this curved swag deconstructed wreath using the following die sets from my beautiful wreath collection. We'll be using the builder wreath, that's the base die set right here. Also, we'll be using the Christmas wreath add-on for the poinsettias, the center for the poinsettia. And lastly, this is optional if you don't have this set, garden wreath add-on, this floral right here. If you don't have the garden wreath add-on, you could use out of this set. You could substitute, I would say, that floral or this floral. There are also two other die sets in my collection, the Halloween wreath add-on and the birthday wreath add-on. Love. There is a bundle available on Spellbinders where you can get all five sets bundled together. So I'm using those three sets to create this and I'm going to make it exactly like I did here. Let's see if I can make it exactly, right? <laughs> Alrighty, crafters, let's get into this video. Let's get started. For the supplies, I'm going to be using my Spellbinders 2-in-1, Spellbinders 9-inch Pro Shears. I have my readers. I love to have these magnifying glasses. I get mine at Walmart. So these are good for crafting, especially when you're dealing with little bits. I also have my double-sided tape, some foam, and my Barely Art Glue. Also in this video, I am going to be using these two new items. This is their trimmer. But if you work with like 11 by 14 paper, legal size and all of that, this is a good trimmer for that because it's not just 12 by 12. So let me open this up because I'm going to now finally use it. I can't believe it goes to 17, 17 and a quarter. Let's put this little trimmer to the test. Yeah, no, it doesn't have a wire, but here is the track for both trimming and scoring. Also, look at this. It does have plastic on it. All right, got the plastic off. Then this arm probably has it as well. There we go. It does hold, so it's not going to go flying. You swing it out. There it is at 17 and a quarter. Oh, this is really nice. And wait a second. They gave me right here. This is like the six and three eighths. This is the 16th of an inch. There is always that little dead space, but at least they put something here for accuracy. Oh, that's neat. And then this is the trimmer part. There are blades for it. Spellbinders was kind enough to send me blades as well. So we're going to be using this now. Oh, this is exciting. <laughs> and I'm also going to be using the teal extended cutting plates with the universal plate system in my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine. Very pretty. So you get two in the pack. Okay. All right. I'm going to also fold this back up. Oh, yeah. This is the back. It has a nice feel too. Oh, this is nice. Wait a second. Does it lock? No, it doesn't lock. But it does snap into place right here at the two ends. So just carefully open it and then snap it back, okay? Use right here. Oh, that's cool too. Has its own little lock. Let's now talk about what I'm going to use to make the card. Oh, come let us adore him. Better Press plate from the Better Press Christmas collection. I think it's the more Better Press. Let us adore him. Four and a half tall by three inches wide. Okay. To be able to have the sentiment and this big floral bouquet, you're looking at a five by seven card. I also used the five by seven matting basics to trim this down. So out here is five by seven. This is black. I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do a black cover, but then I'm going to put the card base in white. Okay. So there is Let Us Adore Him. Another option, All Is Calm and Bright. This is called All Is Calm. You see the sizing? 
roughly the same. Then there is also this option, Peace on Earth. I was thinking the Peace on Earth, see how small it is? This would probably be better on a A2 size. Let me show you what Let Us Adore Him looks like on an A2. So you see on an A2, you don't get the big space, but you could still work a little thing here. It would probably get into this, depending on how you do the placement, but it is gonna be much tighter. I like it like this. I love the big lush bouquet, but I am gonna play with this because I already did press it out. I wanna talk about this press plate a little bit because she can give you gray hair. <laughs> so this is my better press system with the platen and the magnetic chase. In here, I do have three shims because I am using just regular better press paper. I'm not gonna do the double weight for this. I like to do the double weight cotton card for florals and such, but this is just a sentiment, okay? So that's all my good stuff. I was just checking, I do have a <laughs> archival cleaner in here. To do this card, I have the sentiment over to the right, as you can see, and then this to the left. If you switch it, sentiment here and then this this way for the recipient their hands are going to keep on touching this so i think it's better to have it this way okay for opening so you're looking at this so you want the sentiment this side okay you see how the press blade is working when i first was trying to align this thing i was going up here but i discovered this is taller than that so if you straighten it this is what's gonna happen. Everything's gonna start tilting. Where your center point is, and right here, this is the five by seven. Five inches wide, seven inches tall, A7. This is your A2, four and a quarter, five and a half. I'm gonna show you where your center point is and where to line it up. You're looking to line it up, let us. That's your center. So I pretty much did it dead center, but where I'm lining is right there not here don't do it this is longer than that this is taller it's just not going to line up right but if you do it this way it'll line up good let me move this out the way because now i'm going to go ahead and ink this up so i'm going to be using a five by seven cotton card panel this is in porcelain they have them available in all the colors if you want to change the colorway they have five by seven in bisque which is a cream color pebble which is the gray I'm using porcelain. That's the one I normally go for. So I like to buy this. If you don't want to do pre-cut panels, then you would cut the five by seven with the eight and a half by 11 sheets. This is the bigger of the cotton card panel. This is available in all three colors as well. 25 sheets, 118 pound cardstock. But the double weight cardstock, that's 220 pound cardstock. That's why you would take out the shims. This is what I do. I like to prep first because that ink dries and i'm thinking if i ink this up and i'm doing all of this my ink is probably drying while it's waiting on me so i like to prep the paper first and i've learned just put a little bit there <laughs> you see what i'm doing just a hair that's what i'm doing i find that works better for me i don't get as much pull it's the pressure if your die cut machine is kind of new too she's at full pressure so I'll do like two little strips here. I'm going to cut this down anyway, and I'm going to use a die to do it. Now I have my panel ready to go. I have my Platinum 6 machine off to the side. I'm using Better Press Black Ink. This is in the original set. I believe it's the Regal set. And let's go. So when you're inking, you can do like this. I just refilled my ink. But what you're looking for is solid black. So here, I like to go like this and twist. Tap and twist the twisting is what gives you the super dark okay see how here is not as dark as there twist tap twist lightly not pushing too hard just lightly and you can see i'm going pretty light because i'm not really messing up my magnetic chase either i like to do like this i like to go in ink it up so make sure everything is looking super dark it's hard. put my plate on bring my machine over I'm going to be rolling sideways. And here we go. And I go slow too. I've been doing slow lately like this. I think that just gets the ink to press in more so I don't race through it. I used to do that and then also I was like, why am I doing that? Ta-da! So there is the sentiment. See how we're pretty good? 
All right, now I'm going to take this off gently. And this part, go slow with the taking off. Don't just rip, just gently pull. So see, I don't have any tears. All right, that's a pretty good impression. Now, I got to clean this up. Okay, crafters, I'm going to clean up my plate. So I like to dab it in here. Dab, 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 dab. And wipe. I like to wipe here too. Even though I have a second one of this, I still like to keep it clean, as clean as possible. Because I'm even getting mess up here <laughs> on the system itself. I was like, why are you getting messy? But if you have the inky fingers, you touch everything, that happens. So I do like this. And clean my plates really good. And wipe. Sometimes if I get too messy, I'll wipe the back too. But that's just me. You don't have to do all of this. That's just my OCD of crafting. <laughs> there and that's a good clean plate as you can see this is the five by seven card this is the size of that base so what i'm going to use five by seven matting basics a why would you want to use a die if this is not straight and let's say you keep using your trimmer it's going to be because i've tried that before it just gives me so much of a headache it's easier for me to see something when i can frame it out like this i'm using my tape from the better press <laughs> That yellow tape is reusable. So fabulous. I'm not touching the cotton card. Notice what I'm doing? I'm taping on the back. So to run this through, I'm going to use my new plates. Yay. Just for standard die cutting, it's the platform base A and B and one cutting plate, my die image, and another cutting plate. And when you're cutting on top of these better press images it suits you to use a new cutting plate not an older cutting plate where it can impress into the cotton card cotton card is a little bit soft it's cotton so you know then i'm going to go through see no impressions down here we'll have the impression oh look i got a embossed edge <laughs> I'm going to bend this back. These bigger dies, they always bend because of all this open space. So I just bend it back into place gently and then put it on my magnet. So before I go any further, I did want to show you something. This is glimmering the sentiment. What do you think about that? So you could also do this version. Now you see the color difference between the porcelain cotton card and using hammer mill cardstock or whichever cardstock that you glimmer on even if it is spellbinder specialty cardstock and i still came over here still lined it up but i went oversized to then be able to straighten it out it's going a little bit this way i can see it already but you know it's harder to control it with the glimmer because you flip it upside down but this is what it would look like if you glimmer it okay pretty right so i have that one as a future card but we're going to be working on this beauty Alrighty, crafters, this is a color palette I'm using. Spellbinders Fern cardstock. I'm putting the name here on the screen. And everything I'll be detailing and linking below. So I will link these individual cardstocks as well. Spellbinders Poppy Field. Phone Booth. This might not be in stock. You can substitute it with pomegranate or crimson. Two shades of red. See how I have two different colors? This is Tuscan and Brushed Gold. Now let's have a sidebar on brush gold. This is a fabulous cardstock. I only use it here for the centers. It's just such a gorgeous cardstock. If you have ever been curious about it, treat yourself to one pack of this. How I learned about the brush gold, I was watching a video from another Spellbinders maker. When she showed her example, I was like, what's that? I bought my first pack being curious. It's a gorgeous specialty cardstock. And the beauty of this, she also takes wet glue very well. So if you dab glue in here, it's not going to show up. Sometimes these kind of cardstock, you run a line of glue and you stick it down. You'll see your line of glue. Not here. It's that fabulous. Okay. Love brushed gold. Then I have a bright white cardstock from my stash. Why bright white? Because I wanted to have a contrast here. You see how you can see them? It's because this is a different shade of white, bright white, as opposed to the porcelain. I think it's a property of the cotton, more like a stationary type of cardstock. So if you have any bright white cardstock, that's what I'm using here for the florals, okay? Now I showed you all of this. I am not using that. <laughs> In my real life of crafting, 
I cut bits. A little bit here, a little bit there. Because 99% of the Spellbinders cardstock I have, I have purchased myself. So I am very frugal when it comes to all these brands of specialty cardstock because they do add up. So along with cutting all the greens, which I have pre-cut and put in my little sorting tray, which I've been trying to find another one of this. I think I got this at the Dollar Tree. I have my green foliage. This is the fern green. That's how I like to separate it. You can use whatever little bowls, etc. I'm going to show you here what I do. I'll go like this and I go like this to maximize my cardstock. And then I come in like this. So that's one. For the white cardstock, same thing. I do like this. This is heavyweight cardstock too. For the centers. If I have a scrap, I'll pull out my scraps. Sometimes I'll take the cardstock like this and I maximize my, you know, just stretch it, stretch it. I don't use a whole sheet because once you run it through that die cut machine, it will impress on the reverse and then it just won't be usable. This now I'll do. Okay, crafter, so you've seen my little scraps. This is how I die cut, okay? In scraps. My lower plate here, even though I've used it a bunch of times, it's flat. So when it's flat like that, no, I don't tape. If I can avoid it, I avoid it. I go like this. This is how I do in my real life, okay? So you can tape down if you wish. I don't. I go like this. I go like this. And this. And then run it through. Here I have my green... So now what I'm doing, I had cut on this side, flip it over, rotate. This is how you can also keep your cutting plates flat and then run it through. Okay, so there we go. I got my, oh, this one tore. Okay, I'm gonna recut that one. I have another one of the big ones to cut anyway, so I'll cut that one again. And then here's my little center. She's stuck there. And this one. So this is how you know that your machine has pressure when it does this. So what you do is you take your little pick, gently lift. Because sometimes you use your nail and it just won't budge. You can just use a pick. These you can also use as centers. I used gems. All righty, crafters. I'm gonna cut one more of this. Okay, crafters, let's now talk about the assembly. This is the large one. Dab a little bit of glue. Come on in and stagger, okay? And then just let it set. Same thing here. You find the spot where it looks like it's more full. Sometimes I rotate it a little bit just to find that little spot like that. That looks good. That's the top, so I just go like this, hold with one hand, come in, and then... This is just me. You don't have to be so particular, but I'm particular. <laughs> I like to be like this. Okay, there we go. And that gives that look as well. With this one, the centers I'm using, because I didn't even show you the centers, did I? The centers really is for that, but I like it for this flower. Because this flower, you can do a few ways. You can do any one of these centers. I like this particular one. So I was using that center, this flower, I get two of them, so I save one of them. I'm using this one, the more rounded one, not the organic one. But you can use either one, depending on what look you're going for. You can double up this floral too, but I didn't double it up. I don't seem to have a pickup tool. I got to go get one. And go like so. Now for this one, I'm using that center that I cut out in brush gold for the bigger poinsettia. Okay, so I just go like this. There we go. This one did not have a center because it's a gem. Okay, crafters, I went and I got a pickup tool. I already had pre-cut some of these. So let's talk about what you're going to need to make this card. Three poinsettias. I already have two red, one white. I have some centers cut out. For the smaller ones, you're going to need a red. This is the phone booth. Two of poppy field, one in white. Okay. And then this, I have three here. One, two, three. I have some centers. I'm going to pop these centers out and assemble. I'm going to glue up these centers. I'll be right back. If you don't want to use gems in the centers, you can also use these to fill up the space here. It will give your project a different look. 
more like this. You see? And I'd still use a gem on the big one, but you could layer up about five or six of these here to get that more organic look. This is Spellbinder's Forest cardstock. This would darken this up too, if you want. Forest, Fern. You have both of those options. Now with the Buildery set, you're gonna be cutting a bunch of these. The base here, you can do four or five, but these fillers, you're gonna do a bunch of. So I have a lot done. These two are the ones that curve to the left. This one, curves to the right. So I have my curve to the right over here because I like to use that little directional change. Does a better look for the floral. So I started off down here. You see how you can see it right there. I'm still working with the curve. Then I came in like so. I think it's four I used. I'm looking at it and I can see I did four. I'm going to start with the bottom. That's how I started before. Apply the glue down the center and glue. I came out to about here, I think. And see, you can straighten this out too. Pull it out straight, like you can glue it down like this and it'll hold. So if you wanna change the shape a little bit, go ahead. I like to glue from here to there. So the top of the next one to the bottom of the previous. Easy. Okay, like so. And you see what I'm doing? I'm stretching it out just a little bit, training that curve. You can clip that off to that end if you wish. And then I'm going to still straighten out a little bit more. And again. Now here, I did leave that, but I'm gonna cover it up with a whole bouquet. And here. I didn't come all the way out here, but you could do that too. You could come out, but I liked it right about there. So I can snip, snip it about to here. So this is your base and I'm keeping it at this speed so you can follow along and see exactly what I did. I'm gonna come in a little bit more, just a hair more like so. There I go. Okay, we have that little odd end and that's where I started filling in. I could do this version where I keep the curve. That one I flipped up, but I can change it here. But it's a lot of tucking. Where you start to figure out your tucking. At least this is how I do it. That's the beauty of this. Find your sweet spot and stay there. All right, crafters. I am using my old Tim Holtz scissors because I'm cutting adhesive, okay? Cut a little square like so. Make it enough that you don't see it and do it like this. I start off with the big florals first and then I do the tuck afterwards. So I'm gonna go up here like so. I'm looking at what I did before. And then I did the next one, which is about here, which means that I was covering probably that. <laughs> yes, see now how I work? Yeah, little things like that. If I can see it, it bothers me. So then I'm like, well, I'm gonna put a big old flower on it. <laughs> like so. And then I had the white one down here. So I'm gonna cut another section. Notice that I did go in on him. Right here I'm covering it, not so great. So I'm gonna show you what I did. Because if I stick it down like this, it's covering too much of the word him. So I'm gonna turn it a little bit and do like that. You see, let me show you again. That covers up him. Just play with your floral placement. That's a good one too right there. That's a good one too right there. You see what I'm doing? Play a little bit. You can also put a little bit of wet glue on the back of this to give you more wiggle with it. Where I'm not covering up the letter. Sometimes I'll cover a little bit of it, but I don't want to cover up the whole thing. Not tucking yet. I still need to do my small ones. Like this one. That's when I come into these little bits. Thank goodness that you don't really see the foam. Even though I can see the foam there, you won't see it, which is good. And I'm also sticking a gem there. Right about there. It's just playing with the floral arrangement, but I think a lot of you really loved the look. So that's why I'm breaking it down beside each other so you can see. If you're following me in the video, fast forward to this part if you have all the supplies ready and just follow along like a workshop. 
and then i'm going to this one is a little bit higher so i need to pop it up a little bit more i'm going to double pop it sometimes i use cardstock to give it a rise so i'm playing with height too here's the big one that's under this is over then this one is under stuck straight under to the surface you see I'm gonna pop a little bit more there just a little bit of white glue in some spots and go underneath this one coming kind of out to there then i have this one even with the tape yes i sit here doing like this i know this adds up all of this stuff adds up over time i'm a little frugal with this type of thing it's just from years and years of crafting if i go all the way out i would be drowning in adhesive debt <laughs> and cardstock debt <laughs> So I like to go with the bits. It's just my habit. So if you craft like me, you have a friend here. If you don't, maybe you're like, yeah, I am spending a lot of money on adhesive and I just keep on just rolling out. No, use bits. <laughs> use bits. <laughs> it looks like I was filling in this little space right here. After I had done this, that's when I came in with the flowers because I was like, it was looking kind of sparse here. This one needs something underneath it. Hold on. See, I was tilting. Cut this. This is how you fix things too. Double it, pull off the adhesive. This is what I do. You could use your pick. I don't do the pick because I like to control it. So I will come in and do like this. Take my tweezer. I'll come in a little bit like upside down with the tweezer and come in like so and fix it. You see, if I still need to, I would even put another piece here, but I don't think it needs it. It was just kicking up too much on that side too high of a rise these have a lift but they have a low lift so what i'll do when i need a low lift so sometimes i'll take cardstock and create something you have scraps work with your scraps and i'll do like a little bit like this yeah i know you guys are like oh suzanne for real yeah <laughs> and i will glue two pieces together like this and then go underneath i still think i need to be a little bit smaller for that center made my own little riser because sometimes I don't want it to be too high and I see that I have different levels. So I'm showing you how to create the levels. That's one, done, one. There's a new product I could have used too, but it's okay. Scrapbook.com introduced a very low profile foam tape. Haven't tried it. I keep thinking their foam tape for me is only for shakers, but Technically, that low-profile one I could have used for something like this. But I'm just showing you the most economical way to do it. These are the things that you don't use anyway, your little scraps when you die cut. And let it set. Low risers. <laughs> for new crafters that are watching this video, yeah, you can do things like this. Nobody sees this. This will actually be super sturdy compared to this because this has give. You see how you can squeeze it? But I wouldn't do it like six layers deep. You could, but no, there's no reason to. At that point, then you go back into the foam. You know why I'm not going to do this yet? This was done last after my florals. So I'm going to come now in with my leaves, which would go right about here. You can cut these ends off. Sometimes you don't need them because it is catching along that middle. Okay, like so. And you can cover up what is there before and hold it down for like a second, okay? Let the glue work. This one now goes the opposite direction, to the right, to the left, like that. So I'm only using a little bit of it, so I'm going to do a snip, come on in, not there, there. And then I have my floral. Here I can see I did that low flower here, and I also have one going this way. This is one of the standard left facing. Again, tuck. I think this is the part that you guys are curious about. Like that. I have another piece here, so I can come back in again. I like to use the short ones for this type of thing. The long one for something else. I go between both actually. And then go like that. Tuck. I like to have a little bit of greenery underneath my poinsettias. I have a little piece sticking out of there. So that means I cut it again, glue, and come in like so. But you see by having the left right thing, although this now is both 
left facing i just gave myself options i have something there i think this is from the original so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to do one see how you see something peeking out there so i'm going to do a peek this is from the whole base of the builder wreath the curve that creates the curve tweezer starts to come out when it starts to get tight i love these tweezers spellbinders also carries tweezers these are by elizabeth craft designs the spellbinders tweezers are much more pointy so if you want something super accurate go with that oh i didn't stick this down let me stick it down for you guys <laughs> this is that low one because i was about to speed up the video now while I... i'm trying to wait out do you want me to keep it at this speed slowly or do you want me to speed through it there now i have a little bit here i can still use one of these for that little bit you know i can do something closer to something like that you see that little gap there i can fill that in i would just clip this little piece off let me show you what I'm talking about right here. And this is from the base set. I can actually stretch these out. <laughs> but I told you that this has a lot of options. Have I explored every single option? No, with the card making wreath thing. But now with practice, we can all be. Yes, that's a thumbs up. I picked up one of the right facing one. This is the opposite direction because now I'm going up. So I was thinking, you know, start curving it that way. I'm going to put it underneath this. Again, I'm going to come in with my tweez. Er. <laughs> come in with my tweezer. Come on in underneath here. I'm going to take one of the long ones. This one looks like it's going from like, you see it? I'm going to clip a little bit of it though. There we go. That gives a nice look. So follow along with this video and recreate this. This is good practice to make it exactly. And then next time you change it up a little bit, change your colors. Do more tucking, more fluffing. And when you change it up a little bit, that's you now learning how to use the set. Just play. Once you have the idea of play in your mind. That's why I always say play, because I have to tell myself that too. I take off the pressure of having to have it perfect, you know? I'm just exploring, learning. This is like my first time ever remaking a card like this. <laughs> this is interesting for me. Now I'm learning, can I remake a card? We have that end. So you see what I did? Now here is a little bit, well, it was open there too. It didn't bother me here, but it's bothering me here. So I can put something there. <laughs> I can do a little tuck. Yeah. See, now I'm already changing up my own thing. I'm just making a little change. Lifting up the, the pine and going underneath. Wait. There. Because we only run the glue down the center all of these are lifted i lifted this little piece up tuck it underneath that just gives it more added dimension added fluff look and you can keep on fluffing but i, I don't over fluff i haven't reached that point yet maybe one day i'll get there where i'm just tucking 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 some people even do this type of thing where they cover part of the poinsettia i'm still not there yet either I'm just happy that I can actually do this now. I tried it on my own with die cuts, other die cuts, and oh, it was bad. And then when it was just a dedicated one, you couldn't do this type of thing. You couldn't go organic with it. This is what gives you that template to then build on. Love it. You can curve, swag it, oval it. I saw another video too. This one was by Tina. Oh my goodness. She took the wreath and she did discard. I watched part of it and I'm like, okay, I need to really sit down and again, have a cocktail watching that one. <laughs> I don't want a coffee. I want a cocktail. Because <laughs> it was so good. I was like, what did she do? I'm like, I'm going to watch it and take notes. So now I'm going to cover up this little bit right here. You see, I'm going to cover up that boo-boo. So I have it there. I could even add on if I wanted another piece too. I can bring it out more curvy. I'm using the opposite curve and I think I'm gonna go like so. Just a little change. You see what I just did? Just by doing that, it looks different than this, doesn't it? This is my second time. Now I'm just uh, making just a slight change. You can stop right here, start put on the gems, but I'm going to curve it. All right, so if you don't like it, don't add this part. If you like it, knock it out. <laughs> <So> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. So now 
I need to do the base though before I put on the gems. All right, crafters, now it's time to make the card base and the card base for the top. Card base for the top is gonna to be five by seven. I'm gonna cut it five inches. Oh, let's see. Oh, okay, nice clean edge, seven inches. I'm gonna go on this side, like so, seven. Oh, it snaps into place before you cut. Oh, well, don't you move nice and buttery. Oh, I'm liking this. All right, looks nice and straight. Nice edge for the five by seven card. On the eight and a half inch side, I'm going to cut. Most of the time I cut like this, to be honest with you. I don't cut top to bottom. I cut from bottom to top. This gives you both options. Eight and a half inch side, I'm coming out to seven inches. So I'm gonna to go top to bottom with this one. Well, I could have gone either way. And then five inches wide times two is 10 inches. So it's 10 inches wide. I'm gonna go for the five inch width of a five by seven card. Oh, I'm liking this. Now let's try this scoring tool. I have to pause to think about this so I don't actually cut it with the trimmer. But the scoring tool is this color. So let's go here on the 10 inch side at five inches. Not this. This would give you a slim line card. That, you're now on the 10 inch side. So the 10 inch side at five inches. Snap it down, come in with that score. Okay, scoring a bunch of times because I'm 110, ooh. Maybe I didn't need to score a bunch of times. <laughs> and the price point is not bad either. For 12 inches, portable like this with a scoring tool going out to 17 and a quarter for I believe it's what $28, $28.99. This is not bad at all. This would normally retail for 40 or more somewhere else. Okay, crafters, here I am. I'm going to take my Teflon bone folder. If you are a card maker, treat yourself to a Teflon bone folder. I will put a general link below if you don't have one already. This would be your best friend for creating creases and such. My card is not like this. It's actually flat. And this is a 110 pound cardstock. When the cardstock is thick like this, when you fold it, it has a tendency to stay open. So that's what your bone folder does for you. All right, so now I'm going to put this on top of this. Let me apply some wet glue. I'm going to adhere it to the card base. I like to turn it sideways. That's just my thing. Like so. Ensure a good fit. Here is my five by seven card base. Then I'm going to now adhere this on the top. I'm not going to use wet glue. I'm going to use double-sided tape. I don't generally do wet glue with the card top like this. That's just my preference. With the cotton card, I've always been using double-sided tape. So that's just my thing. <laughs> Haven't tried it with the wet glue. I don't want to see it printing through. It drives me crazy if I see it. Some materials will show the lines where you applied the glue. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I don't use my fingers to do the tear. I like to do a straight tear. So I'm using a quilting ruler. This is two and a half inch. I picked it up in a local craft store, sewing section. Best friend. Because when I rip it like this, sometimes it will rip the cardstock too. But when you have it like that, it's a clean rip. You see it? And it's not lifting up the cardstock. Okay, here I'm going to cut because I can feel a little bit of my florals screaming at me. Too much pressure. All right, there we go. I'm taking off the double-sided tape. As you can see, I love to use the scrapbook.com brand. This is perfect for card making. Mini album making, I would only use this for matting. I wouldn't use it for construction. Construction, I stick with score tape. So I have a lot of score tape because I haven't made a mini album in a while. <laughs> Try to center it as best as I can. Because here... I have a thin boundary, as you can see. There we go, there we go, there we go. Now, isn't this starting to look like that one? As a matter of fact, yeah, this is a little bit over because I wanted a bigger frame, but this is five by seven, so this is probably like five and a quarter or so. Look at that, love. So now I have the rest of my florals with some cardstock on the back. I'm thinking of making like this in a pink colorway, but I don't know, I love it in the traditional colors so much. <laughs> Like wondering, should I? Should I? I just don't know. <laughs> there we go. I have something green underneath here, so I'm going to do a little bit of surgery. I'm going to snip. 
I don't like the greens peeking out like that. I want it to be flower, flower, done. And then this one goes here. The reason I had put this here is to fill in that open space because there's a lot of white space on this card. I just wanted to fill it in and that's where this flower came into play. Instead of having it as all poinsettias, you can try it that way, but I think it works by offering the break with this flower. This has popped up a little bit high. Let me take off one of these layers. There, just peeled it off, that's all. All righty, we are almost done. Look at that, we're in the home stretch now. Next are my centers, and I think these Spellbinders Red Gems really did a good job. So get yourself a pack of the Red Gems if you wanna reproduce what you're seeing here, even for the practice of it, a pack of Red Gems. I'm also using Spellbinders Silver Mix Gems, super favorite of mine. Now this is what I use my pick for. So you slide it here like so, and you pick up one, come on in, glue it down. You have a second or two to push it over, center it. This is how I work it. So I use the big crystal of the silver mix gems and do like that. I don't pick it off with my finger. If I do that with my finger, it's gonna go flying. So I like to pick it up this way. You can also use a tweezer, but I don't know, it works better with the pick. Then I use the second size over for the centers of my small poinsettias. There, okay? There. And one for here. So that's the silver mix gems. Now we're gonna come in with the red gems. For this, I purposely did not go the bigger sizes. I wanted to stay here in the small size because I'm using so many gems. The tiny one. I did one out here, here. I did this one down here. And of course I can change it up. Looks like I pulled this from a different sheet and maybe that's why my adhesive shifted. Hold on, there, like so. There, that looks better. This one was here. Here. I'm gonna go in the middle of what I did. So I'm having a little bit of a change here. So I'm gonna go with my change. I'm gonna go inside this time. Before I did it on the outside, as you can see here, but this time I'm putting something there. I just feel like, why not? I can come on out here, maybe there. Well, that's a straight line. <laughs> yeah, I see things like this. I don't know why, but I do. It drives me crazy that I do that sometimes, but yeah. I'm kind of liking this a lot. See, you come back in a second time and all of a sudden things start to look a little different. There, I think I want one here. Didn't do that before, but I think it could use one there. I want it to be seen. Yeah. And then I did one up here. You get a hundred and, what is it, 108? You get 108, so it does look like I'm using a lot, but in the overall scheme, no, I'm not using like a ton. But it looks like it, but I'm not. <laughs> there. I did one underneath this little leaf, kind of peeking out. There, a small one, right there, up here behind, there, another one, looks like it's around, I can do it up here, I can change it up a little bit, stick it underneath that leaf, and then some smalls, another small, and another of this there's like small, medium, large, extra large. So this is a medium. Now I changed it, so now I'm like figuring where to put it. I'm gonna put it kind of like in the same spot that I had before. There we go. Okay, crafters, I think that is it. I still had one right there. Okay, let me go back in. Looks like it's this size. Maybe I'll go bigger. Let's see if that adds a little something. I'm sticking it like, I want it to be peeking out from the poinsettia. There. Alrighty, crafters, look at that. Oh my goodness, it took me. <laughs> Even the lighting changed. <laughs> oh goodness, I reproduced my card. Original, new version. I would use my envelope punch board to then make a 
customized envelope for this at this sizing okay and you also want to go maybe seven and a quarter or seven and a half by five and a half because of the height of all these florals just to give you more wiggle room but isn't this pretty this is curving a little bit more could i add something to it now that i'm looking at it yes i could come on out more like that <laughs> i tell you you have room to play and play and play some more. I may just actually do that. I'm not done yet. I thought I was done, but I'm not done yet. All right, crafters. If this was driving you nuts, to extend it out further. If you want to have it look closer to this, I can customize it that way. I can also curve it up if you wish, but I kind of like it out like so. This looks a little bit fuller too. Maybe I will do that. What do you guys think? So it's not a perfect reproduction, but very close, very close. I'm going to go, like I just said, underneath that leaf. Come on out, hold. So now I would pop a gem here without tearing my cotton card. Let me see if I can reposition this one. It might tear it. Okay, let me see. Come on. Lift. Okay. Didn't do much damage to the cotton card, but my adhesive is now gone. So what I'm going to do, use a little dab of glue, pop it about here instead. So you see how you can fix it, change it. If it starts to look wonky, stand up and take a look at your project. So now I just made just a hair of a change. I could put another gem there if I wish. I'm going to stop though. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope for the crafters that had asked for a tutorial, please let me know if I should have raced through this or do you like this slower pace? I like the slower pace because I think you guys can do it with me. It's not a 10 minute video where on your own you're going to be like what does she do and i'm going too fast so let me know if you like the pace because i'd love to keep my wreath tutorials at a slower pace so you can follow along i'm working on a birthday edition but what do you think love let me know in the comments below i'm going to try a different version of this in a different colorway for the one that i had glimmered I also have this little a21 my um light stand just went on it cover that up then <laughs> Alrighty, crafters, everything that I used will be detailed and linked below. You can use cardstock from your stash. Just play with a lighter shade of red, darker shade of red, bright white. If you aren't using the cotton card, still try to have a variation so that when you do use the white, don't use the same exact color. It's going to be harder to see. But here you can see that this is different than that. Alrighty, crafters, until the next video, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was fun. Get some red gems and some poinsettias and a wreath and have fun. Stay crafty, my friends. Bye.